Hello and welcome to Cinema Crap Tackless, where we say a bad movie is just as hard to make as a good one, just a lot easier to make fun of. This is Dave, and with me is my uncrappy co-host, John. Stephanie couldn't join us today because she's headed down that terror tunnel known as Home for the Holidays. Don't worry, we're still going to check in with Stephanie from time to time to see how she's doing. We don't know what she's going to say, we just said we'll put in the audio. Isn't that right, Steph? Hey guys, um, I'm not out of town yet. I'm literally still here. Uh, are you at the studio right now? Recording? I, I thought that we weren't going to do this uh, at all this month. So I got this voice message from John that said, hey, we're recording in the studio, uh, you, you know, so get in touch with Dave. And then I get this message from Dave saying that you'd be sending me clips that I could listen to and then record a response. And I'm super confused because I am still in town. I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. Um, so if you could just like, hold on, I can make it to the studio. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm leaving right now. I mean, God, like, I can't believe you guys did this. Like, this is really, really not cool. Um, because this is supposed to be our awesome Christmas extravaganza for Cinema Craptaculous. And you have basically not informed me of anything you're doing. So just please stop recording. I will be there in a minute. All right. Thanks. Wow, I can't believe you just said that, Stephanie. That's that's a little, you know, offensive. Wow. I she got a lot off her chest with that one. Wow, I know, I know. Yeah. It's a, well, oh, well, she's in a pressure cooker world. <laughs> it's the holiday, Steph, and that means one thing: it's time for the holiday craptacular. Well, actually, this is kind of the first one we've ever done. But here's the rapid recap to catch you up. Rapid recap. Movie geeks and entertainment nerds, the Cinema Craptaculous crew are coming together for a mega show to take a look back at the year that was and a quick peek into the year that's coming. So get ready as everyone from the Cinema Craptaculous family joins us for a very special holiday craptacular. Like, we did a lot of movies this past year, John. Like, a ton of movies. When you think about it, it, there were so many uh, not-so-great movies and some great... Like, what was your favorite movie we did? Well, when you say favorite, are we talking about favorite episode where we enjoy trashing a film or a film I really enjoyed? Because I'll tell you, it's going to be a little slim on the latter. I mean, a little, uh, little uh, light on uh, praise. Let's do one of each. What was your favorite movie to make fun of? And what was your favorite movie uh, that you just actually enjoyed? Well, uh, golly, it's so hard to say because, you know, we, uh, we, there, there was that uh, remake of uh, She's All That with the, the influencer and the kid from Karate Kid. Um, and I, I it, it, it's <laughs> the fact that that was even something I spent like my 90 minutes on. Yes, there have been many times where I've wanted to strangle you and uh, I curse your name. I curse meeting you. I, cur- mer- I <laughs> regret ever agreeing to Cinema Craptaculous. Um, and, and I'm not but saying you that stay. film. But you stay. Well, but then. You, 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 you moved grew... to London and then you stay. But you know what? You grew the B-sides. And I see what you guys in that show have to watch. Then I don't feel so bad. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm at least living in bad movies in the present. You guys pull up the past. And with it comes all of the angst and and the nostalgia that, that has got to be unsettling. Or inspiring I don't know. you know because you bring up the b-sides cast let's just bring them out right now yeah oh wait oh out. us oh my gosh oh, we, oh. We've yes been it's talk and Adam. hello hello <laughs> they just happen to be walking by their mics so, yes welcome to the holiday craptacular hooray thank uh, you for having us you. happy why holidays did, wait why does adam sound like santa today <laughs> <laughs> because he's in a giving mood i am a oh. gift that's it How do you know it doesn't sound like it every day and you're just now catching on? I've also eaten like a dozen (laughs) Christmas cookies this morning, so that could be another reason. And I'm drunk on eggnog. (laughs) That's a classic Adam move. I'm not you guys. It's just it's like a hint in there, a hint in there. You know, while I have you guys here, I have to ask because okay, well, Dave asked me what my favorite movies were, and you know, yeah. uh, you know, real quick, I just want to say that you know we watched the sequel to the Babysitter, although I can't remember if that was last year. There was the uh, the one with the you know Jason Momoa where he's you know the dad, and it's kind of like a oh the girl yeah the, a little bit of the sixth girl sense. Who escaped yeah uh, most awful experience was watching Halloween Kills, but reviewing the show was great, especially I was. <laughs> Oh, but I tell you, God. what what really inspires me now is when I listen to the B-sides, because 
I don't want to, you know, jump the gun and you guys talk about the shows that you liked or didn't like, but your Streets of Fire show was, <laughs> was I mean, I, I, I'm I, sorry, I have to bow down with respect. And I'll, I'll tell you the context of when I was listening to it, I was, yes, I was getting ready for this big sojourn over to the pond, over the pond to the United Kingdom. And I was in my shed that I was packing up, you know, putting together so I could pack up a bunch of stuff. And I listened to your show and I smashed my thumb with a hammer. I was laughing so hard at some of your bits and and angst. So I just want to say that that my favorite show was was your show actually, which was uh, Streets of Fire. Bravo! Aww, That's nice. Thank you. That's nice. Thank you. I- I want to commend John on on all the big words he uses now that he's in London and he can, he can lord over us. It's uh, a little hard to discern what he's saying with that thick it accent of his. But, it's, but, it's Lord L O U R D. Just so correct. Uh, see, see, oh yeah. You learn a little Isn't she New Zealand? Eh, it's all the same. But that's it's a different. Term. It doesn't matter. Uh, the point is. Streets of fire. The streets were on fire, you guys. Like, I just, I've never seen a more aptly titled film. So thank you for acknowledging how great that was. Well, yeah. I mean, when you've got a lead character walking around in suspenders and <laughs> no shirt. Off, no, yeah, no shirt or, or a shirt with no sleeves and suspenders oh, and yes. a trench coat that was designed for a man three sizes his size, three times his size. Like, I mean, yeah, that's sex. That's just straight sex appeal. That's right. You know, in 1983, when he put on the oversized coat, the director was probably like, uh, that's obviously too big of a coat. <laughs> and, and the wardrobe stylist was like, you know what? In eight years, it will be all the rage. Or she yep. goes, you know what? You cast a different actor. And this is the coat I have, and I can't take it back. So that's probably more like what happened, <laughs> is my guess. <laughs> He was, uh, who, who was that? What was his name? Michael something, something. Michael Perry Perry. Pe- Perry. There it oh, is. That's Michael wow. Perry. Who was that? Wait, who was is that? that? Is that Doc and S'more from uh, Cinema Craptaculous Expanded Universe? So many hey, people guys. walking Uh-oh. by their mics. We, we ha- oh, we also happen Uh-oh. to be walking Uh-oh. through through the Cinema Craptaculous uh, recording studios. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. one of you guys opened the door and the vacuum just sucked us right in. Yeah, we've got so much going on. Um, I hope you helped yourself to the cereal bar. Grab some, uh, you know, some Lucky Charms. Yeah, oh, I certainly did. And it's tasty. <laughs> Very. We're gonna, need, we're gonna need some more, some more yeah. uh, of all of it. It's gone. Yeah, I'm so, guys, you know, sorry. They, that... they used to, this. They used to shoot porn in this studio back in the in the Boogie Nights days, but now Wait. it's oh, yeah. some cinema craptaculous programming. I'm sorry. There, there is still there is still some things filmed. That actually hour. explains the smell. That, yeah, what coffee made I use? No, right? it, I, you should. I told you to stay out of the fridge. I told you to stay out of the fridge. <coughs> Is that eggnog? <laughs> doc, Doc, I thought you were just about to. Can you do a Gollum impression? Just, just totally random. <laughs> I, I, I love go. how John asked him to do the impression and then proceeds <laughs> to do the impression himself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, so John, hey, John. Not surprised. <laughs> it's like Ford. Ford goes, have you seen this movie? I haven't seen that movie yet. Okay, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But anyway, this is what it's about. <laughs> Doc is at the end. My favorite part is when I'm editing our podcast and I know I'm going to insert a clip and one of us, usually me, will do the voice of the character and I have to make a choice like, do I keep myself doing Jack Nicholson or do I put in Jack Nicholson? And lately I, I have been excising myself out because the real thing sounds better. But I think about I, I think it. you I should think keep it. the impression the impression yeah. is better. It's more fun. Although I've been doing a lot of Jeff Goldblum lately, and I feel like that's a little tired. Kind of like everybody doing a walk-in, you know? <laughs> Ford, don't, don't be I, tempted, Ford. Just stop. No no Goldblum today. No good. But you can always do what's-his-face from Jaws. Richard Dreyfus. Richard Dreyfus. Uh, Dave, I don't have to take this working class hero crap. <laughs> <laughs> You're all gonna die. I love that laugh. That laugh, I'm going to like, uh, I'm going to actually edit porn so that laugh is underneath the whole thing and then post it to <laughs> Pornhub and make a bazillion dollars. Is that how that works? <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> what what I really like about Expanded Universe is your ability to go back to the James Bond well over and over again. And I know that sounds like a backhanded Ford. compliment as I say it out loud. Ford. But John Ford. Really? You've done like four shows that have all been interesting about James Bond. 
it mm. would be disingenuous to say that I created the expanded universe simply as a platform for my fetish with James Bond. That would that would be untrue. I told you, John, people would notice, but did you listen? <laughs> no. Let's do another Bond. Okay, I don't know, Dave, if we're following our formats, but if we want to talk about the expanded universe, um, the formats gone out the window. I, I'm sorry, I I, I I I jacked that. Well, if you any of you guys heard our guest, uh, Dr. Lisa Funnel, who we had had. Had in 2020, I think, and I uh, I discovered this this woman from a I don't know from listening to a James Bond and Friends podcast, which is kind of like the premiere. Wait, for, Ford, you, Ford, you're into James Bond. Uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, maybe. And so, but I'll tell you, there are people out there that like just trounce me with the knowledge. And this woman is one of them. She's a, a professor in Oklahoma and she teaches gender and feminist studies and she teaches an accredited course on the James Bond movies. And, and so she shows these like very outdated, misogynist, bigoted Bond films and have the kids mm -hmm. dissect them and rip them apart. Anyway, she um she was uh, on our show again this year, uh, a, a very sought after guest. I look at her credentials and she was interviewed by like bbc and cnn and oh wow um for when no time to die came out so i was very kind of fortunate but man she uh can go on and so we i actually did a bonus show and then there was even like another 45 minutes after that where we just talked about like hollywood and gender and it, yeah i i basically could have turned the whole season over to a conversation with dr funnel for the whole year uh, well we just not. turned this episode over to uh your recap of your interview <laughs> with dr lisa funnel because there was only four bond episodes and we needed a fifth bond episode she's actually <laughs> coming in to take over for me we'll be here another two hours well, honestly i think uh expanded universe episodes i think some of the best ones were the ones that we had guests so like what other guests yeah. did, we, did we have this year uh, was it justin yeah justin that was sean do you remember uh, Smore, do you remember Justin Worsham, the dad episode? I do. That was a really good episode, too. He was very funny, and uh, he cracked a lot of jokes. <laughs> it was funny because, like, I was going to say it was just funny because after we uh, recorded that episode with him, I'd go to, like, the local Ralphs, and I would, because he, like, deals with real estate, I would see, like, his picture on the like, <laughs> cards. Like, hey, yes. Yeah, I'm sure he'd you, love the plug, too. Fun Keith Properties. One of the most downloaded episodes was with the uh, Broadway star, and I all right totally blanking on his name. He's a childhood Brooks friend of yours. Ash John. Manskis. That's yeah, it. Brooks was a high school friend of mine, and we did uh, we did singing in the rain together our our senior year, and among other shows. And he went on to you know was one of those guys that said I want to have a Broadway career, and he did it. And he's been nominated for two Tony Awards, and he was uh, most recently for The Prom. And uh, James Corden played his role in the movie that was on Netflix. And uh, when they did the when they did the Tony Awards, uh, they did a number from it at the beginning. And Brooks was up front next to James Corden, and I asked Brooks, I said, Brooks, do you think that James because this was two weeks before they announced the cast with, you know, was it Nicole Kidman and Meryl Streep and everybody. I said, do you think oh, yeah. James wanted you next to him in that number at the Tony so he could study you because he knew he was going to be <laughs> cast as you? And Brooks, just the kind of look on his face was like, I never never thought about it. Like, he was, he was very polite, but I wonder if there's a part of him. Nothing, like, <laughs> nothing like fueling a little anxiety in a uh, performer's life. I just feel bad because Sean, I feel bad because S'more uh, really was not big into musical theater. Uh, unlike all of you guys, I'm sure you would be mm -hmm. just. <laughs> anyway, so well, I I'm... took it like S'more was very magnanimous, but literally was like, um, I've never seen that. Uh, not, not familiar <laughs> with that show. No, I, just, I did a lot of nodding, a lot of smiling. It's like, yeah, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't seen it. Great. Hey, Craptaculars. We'll be right back. And now back to the show. Let, let's bring in our, our newest member from Real Debate, our moderator. He's, he's the guy who keeps us going uh, while we try to tear each other's uh, opinions apart. It's JDH. Oh, Hello, everyone. Hey. Happy holidays. <laughs> Great to see everyone. How are you doing, JDH? Doing fantastic. Got a little uh, spiked eggnog going, so the holidays Ooh. are looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing mm. looks better than when you're drunk. <laughs> Especially <laughs> me. Uh, <laughs> hey, you said when you're drunk. <laughs> Thank you one and all for having me uh, in this craptacular world. I've, I've had a lot of fun this yeah. year talking about movies and listening to you guys just go at it. So thank you so much. <laughs> 
I, I just, I want to commend you though, because I think some of us are a little unruly, not me, but some of us oh, no. are a little unruly and you do a very good job being disappointed in us. And I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. You no, I think podcast? you do a great job. Are you the guy in the podcast who yells, let's get ready to ramble. <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's actually a pretty good tagline for it at least when it comes to my arguments well my favorite part about working with jdh is they'll be like okay and now you have two minutes and i'm like great because i've got about 15 seconds worth of material <laughs> so yeah. what happens. no one can stretch content out longer than you guys for sure jdh what would you say was your favorite battle uh, or i don't want to say argument but what, what was your favorite um specific <gasps> exchange on the show this past year. Yeah, for sure. My favorite uh, battle, let's just go with that word. Uh, when we had Tara and Adam on, they were, you know, arguing the merits of live action versus animated Beauty and the Beast. And typically right. all asked a very off the cuff, just kind of fun question just to kind of get everybody in the mood, keep things light. And I asked them if your opponent could be any inanimate object, like a piece of furniture from the movie, what would it be and why? And little did I know that there was already an inside joke between them about being an inanimate object and they just went at each other we got completely <laughs> off topic and i couldn't have had more fun uh during that debate with the two of them so i don't know if they want to talk about which animate object they were but stupid adam <laughs> oh yeah I, I, will, I will happily talk about that <laughs> tara and i have done comedy together for a very long time and there was this scene we did where we were so supposed bad. to be faux lovers and she's like call me that name you've always called me for years and i go broomstick and since then <laughs> hey now that has been a running joke in every circle we travel in as to like tara's nickname it um, was one of the funniest moments. I mean, I literally, like, not only was the scene over, I think the rehearsal was, a, like, that was, the, that was it. You, you can't top that. You couldn't top it. And I'm still mad about it because it was really funny. And it makes me so mad. Tara, when you oh. have a family reunion, you should all dress up as broomsticks. And it'll be like a big homage <laughs> to the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh, oh, oh I would love to Perfect. see the O'Brien family dressed in, as broomsticks. Bum, 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 well, according yeah, to Adam, I'm just Adam. a living broomstick. So, and then the best part is that whole group would just send me pictures of brooms. Like they would text me pictures of brooms, like all the time. <laughs> I, now I want to do a uh, a picture of us where it's all of us, and then a broom for you. <laughs> Now, in those our debates, holiday card, did you guys ever get um, like uh, I'm trying to think, were there any heated exchanges where not, not like anger, although, you know, Dave, uh, no, but uh, did anybody really kind of feel like they were on the ropes or the other person felt like they had the other person on the ropes? And JDH you had to sort of, you know, pull, you know, pull them off, anything like that. Theatrical cut, Snyder cut, theatrical cut, Snyder cut. <laughs> it was just, I don't think we I, ever I, got I, that, I, that heated with it, but um, certainly we've had some guests on. I know, like Dave was thrown for a loop. I brought up something about ageism with Harrison Ford continuing to play uh, Indiana oh, Jones, that's with and it just went from, dead silent. Uh, shoot the flick. <laughs> Oh uh, yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I, I know. Just, I was just doing one where I was debating Stallone versus Schwarzenegger, there it is. and my opponent uh, uh, came at me uh, accusing, and rightly so, that the Rocky movies are basically just a white fantasy of a white male beating <laughs> Muhammad Ali. And yes. like ninety percent of my debate was structured around the quality of the Rocky <laughs> movies, and I was like, "Well, there goes all." Like he just had me. He just had yeah. me. Yeah. I thought he it was did. very appropriate to use on he the did. ropes because I was on the ropes for the rest. You know, of the day. Adam, you guys have to do eighty six Rocky four and you know twenty twenty one directors cut Rocky four. So robot or no? I robot. would love to do that. If anybody <laughs> here has an opinion one way or the other, I would <laughs> love to hear people uh, argue back and forth on those two. Well, I, I do want to point out that Stallone versus Schwarzenegger debate is going to be coming up at the beginning of January and it's mm. with our uh, our good show friend Doug from My Views Are My Own which is a great show and um, it was 
was really great having him on, and there's a lot of funny stuff going on. He's a good debater. He, uh, he was he, fantastic. Like, he, and, he he just walked in. I don't know how to debate, and he killed it. Yeah. He just killed it. On yeah, the- he yes. was like, I've never debated before. And when you guys hear this yeah. episode, you're going to be like, you liar. You just, like, yeah. you're a liar, <laughs> yes. and yeah. you crush don't ever, You, you don't ever, set, us, you don't set ever Adam pool. up. Don't ever play pool with him, either. No, yeah. no, no. He'll hustle you. <laughs> hey, I, I can, can we throw out suggestions to for uh, you know n- next year's possible debates? Absolutely, and I'd I'd love to have you guys on. Anyone who has not been on, please know that you're welcome anytime. So. I I would just like to see somebody debate like in the superhero realm because you now we're at the point where there've been so many goddamn films, most of which we've talked about ad nauseum and continue to talk about. But now you could do like Fantastic Four versus Fantastic Four. You could do you know mm. maybe we'll be able to, you know I, I don't know about that. So Brandon Routh versus Henry Cavill or you know that kind of <gasps> stuff. Yeah. 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 And and now that I know you're such oh, a that big sounds James like Bond something fan. Tara wants to see. Now I do. I you're such a big I'd James like to Bond just see fan, that battle. I'm sure we can find somebody to argue against you with the latest James Bond movie, if you liked that one. I'm I pretty bet. sure. We'll oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we yeah. haven't had enough James I Bond. I know quite a few people. That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 We, we haven't done James Bond in a while, so yeah, go for it. <laughs> I think that's a good one. <laughs> Dr. Funnel's going to join us right now. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it goes again. More clear, Bond. Clear open the rest of your morning. <laughs> I think I think right now is a good time to check in with Stephanie to see um, to see what she's thinking of the show so far. Stephanie, what do you think? Dave, I am here. I am outside the studio right now. I've been here trying to text you guys for the last twenty minutes, banging on the glass of the windows, trying to get in, but you've changed the door codes. So I don't know how I'm supposed to participate in this. I think it's a really rude thing for you guys to be constantly checking in to see how I'm doing and what I'm thinking. Well, this is what I think, Dave. I think you are a piece of crap and everybody in there who is purposely ignoring me, I know you can see me. Doc, S'more, I know you can see me. Tara, JDH, Adam, I know you can see me. This is so rude. I am just, I am flustered. I am flustered. And I'm angry. I don't appreciate this at all. And you know the person who I blame the most for? You, Dave. You. You really let me down. I'm going to figure out a way to get in here because this is not cool. This is not cool at all. And you will pay. Wow. Yeah, Stephanie, I, I would agree with you. Oh, no. Particularly your comments about Dave. I just want to say, again, <laughs> Stephanie, thanks a lot for leaving me. Thanks a lot for leaving me with all these gentlemen today. Really appreciate it. Too much it. testosterone. Sorry. <laughs> Is that what you call what we have? Testosterone? Is that what you go? <laughs> testosterone light, maybe? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that sounds about right. I think Josh Hawley needs to listen to our show and he'll have renewed faith in the male species. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What are some of the things you guys are looking forward to in the upcoming year? Like just any kind of pop culture thing like movies or books or comic books, TV shows? Well, I want to just say just in general that now that people are listening um, and we have more people, more listeners, I've started to get friends who are now suggesting movies, like suggesting old movies, like, oh, you got to watch this. And I think that's kind of fun because, A, it's like bringing up a lot of movies that I definitely don't want to watch and we're going to watch. And it's stuff I've never heard of. So I I think that's kind of fun. And just as like a as as the craptaculous, you know, as we expand and people listen, we love suggestions. I love suggestions. I think it's great. Tara is very suggestible. Correct. Absolutely. (laughs) Have another drink. S'more, you've got a bunch of um, and Doc, you guys have a bunch of uh, superhero films just on the docket. What are you guys, um, what are you looking forward to and what are you concerned about? Marvel. (laughs) Marvel. Marvel. Are you you looking forward to and concerned about? Marvel. Yeah. (laughs) Marvel and more theater. More theater. Oh, yes. Rogers Rogers the Musical. Yes. I'm waiting for Rogers the Musical. I want to see it when they actually, uh, that comes out. Are you guys excited about Robert Pattinson taking over for Batman? Okay. How do I say this nicely? (laughs) Not a big fan of sparkly vampire boy being the Dark Knight. (laughs) But watching those trailers, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I misjudged him. Sparkly vampire boy. So, well, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe he'll do a good job. Yeah. and, and And for me, unpopular opinion, I don't like Batman. (laughs) 
Oh, oh at wow. all. Wow. We just had a broom. So disappointing. So disappointing. Bring Dog. Yeah, we gotta do a real debate. Yeah, we gotta do a real debate. I've I have no interest, no interest in watching it. Not because of Robert Pattinson, but it's just I've, we've just seen so much Batman. They're shoving it down our throats. We see Batman everywhere. They put Batman's name on everything. I'm just I'm sick of him. I know oh. the Batman egos a bit far. <laughs> that and Batman pearl necklaces and Batman bullets <laughs> just seemed wrong. You guys got to understand guys. also that Mario's wearing an X-Men sweater right now. Uh-huh. As he talks about how there's been too much That's branding right. of Batman. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd bring they, that to light. Just yeah, they need to get that audience. franchise going. There haven't been a, any movies in the last five minutes. Yeah, I saw that there was a Batman, um, Batman Scooby Doo comic book, and I was like, mm, that is a little too far. <laughs> like that, that's that's the line right there. I don't know if we need the Batman Scooby Doo comic book. They have, they put Batman in front of everything. You know, it's like any other team that he's not even a part of. They put Batman with the Metal Man. The Lakers. Uh, uh, where, where is that Batman Scooby Doo comic book? I'd like to read that. For the record. <laughs> you can find it on Comicsology. <laughs> Oh, done. I, <laughs> uh, um, I, I think w- just real quick, I think uh, with things I'm looking forward to, there's a lot of TV sh- series that are coming back. Um, and, you know, it's hard to tell what the pandemic did or didn't do with regards to the quality. And I, what I mean is, is, you know, the, because so many shows were not able to get up and running, I wonder if that helped or hurt the writing process and the, the production process. If you guys recall, there was a show that, that um, Netflix had pulled the plug on because they got a couple of episodes in. Was it Glow? And yeah. so they had a COVID outbreak and they just pulled yeah, the plug on the right. whole series, which leads yeah. me to believe oh, there was that. maybe a little more behind the scenes. Yeah. But yeah. Other, other shows have had COVID outbreaks and they've plowed through. But I'm looking forward Batman. to it. Mar- right. Uh, Marvelous <laughs> Mrs. Maisel is one I'm looking forward to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, I don't know if if these shows, you know, like. You know, think about like Stranger Things. Stranger Things. It's set in the past, or, or a lot of those shows that are period pieces. They don't have to address the present. But all these other shows, you're like, are they going to have masks or not masks? I know the shows that came back during that were like yeah. hospital shows, like Grey's Anatomy or whatever. I think they had masks. This is us. But Morning in terms show, of like a lot of the shows, too. but I don't know how much the yeah. pandemic will sort of really impact the shows coming down the pike or or not. I don't know. I'm sorry, there Grey's Anatomy is still on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, Did that show come out in 1990? You're not bad mouth. Don't bad mouth man. She has ears <laughs> everywhere. Don't do that. You know what I mean? She will oh, shut oh. this thing down like that. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Who's the latest? Shundalay, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean <laughs> it. <laughs> Who's the current Mick on that show? Like they had Mick Dreamy, Mick Steamy. Who do they have now? Mick, Mick, Mick Wing? Who, who's next? Mick Nuggets. Mick Nuggets. Mick Nuggets. Mick Nuggets. Uh, <laughs> he's a little bit you know, The show is so <laughs> old that I think Patrick Dempsey's son on the show is now uh, uh, in med school. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He's Mick yeah. Dreamy part two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I believe Meredith Grey is actually being played by a skeleton. Uh, I think is the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is no, it's a, funny. They it, just is it just Academy with... Medical School? Is that what it's called? Uh, latest... I think they need to start doing like mashups. Uh, you know, we talked about. Uh, I don't know. One of our shows we were talking about uh, where they mix. You know, like the big uh, franchises that mix up Freddy versus Jason and oh, yeah. um, Alien you know, versus Predator. Right. I think they need to have like ER versus Grey and Grey's Anatomy, and then you you know you start cro- and bring. Old cast yeah. members back, and um, you know, because what was the show that uh, Scrubs. Cobra, Cobra Kai came in, and uh, I start we started thinking like, God, that'd be great if they could get eighty characters, you know, depending on who has the rights, and bring them back. So I had like characters from Sixteen Candles, you know, yeah. are, I- I- integrate with Can't Buy Me Love, or you know, you know, you know, what <laughs> Can't I'm Buy Me Candles, the new movie from <laughs> John Hughes ish. <laughs> Spectacular <laughs> mashups. I love it. Let's do it. I, I will say one thing I'm curious about and kind of looking forward to is the uh, now that Game of Thrones is no longer on the air, they were looking for the next great fantasy series in which they've Amazon's now done Wheel of Time. Yep. And I am curious to see how they do. As someone who's read all 14 of those books, oh, oh God remember, bless you. Oh, yeah. I remember when wow. I heard, yeah, God I bless I heard you, they were doing it. I'm like, they're how? Like, how? Are they doing <laughs> it? I tapped out. 
at seven yeah. bucks. Yeah. After well, seven books, I was done. Yeah. After five books, they stopped being good. Uh, <laughs> hey, no. you just kept reading. Hey, you <laughs> kept reading. I was, I was on you're the hoping, You're hoping it doesn't get better, so it was on exactly. for a while. <laughs> Have you seen the show at all? I was like, I'm too... Yeah, yeah actually, but my fiance loves it. and uh, <laughs> I love that qualification, though. It's like, <laughs> not you love it, but yeah. my fiance loves it. <laughs> I mean, someone who's never read the books loves it. It's really hard. It's really hard to take something that you've you've spent like probably cumulatively like ten years of your life putting in your head and watching it on screen. And the other thing that always pisses me off about those shows is all the pronunciations I thought I had right, oh, yes. were completely wrong, just completely wrong. Like oh, that's not so how you say that. Grand author is a grand author. <laughs> <laughs> right. The ice die is not is he dizzy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I just kind of assumed that's how you said that. Yeah, but I'm excited to see, A, how that story, if they keep up the quality. Because I heard, like, they spent, like, $10 million on the pilot or something like yeah. that. Because they yeah. built and destroyed a whole village for the first yeah. pilot. And so I'm really curious to see if, A, the quality keeps up. B, if they manage to make uh, Jordan's series of books, like, continue to be engaging. And how far they're actually going to go down the road of the wheel of time series because it gets kind of banana sandwich after book five <laughs> six like it gets real weird yeah. so we're really weird oh yeah well i don't think they're hurting for money at amazon so they may uh just to prove amazon. a point they may just keep going to please you <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then, the first four episodes aren't uh, they spending like a something like half a billion on the lord of the rings series or something that's right that's yeah. funny too yeah. yeah i'm curious about that it, one yeah we're talking a lot about television shows. It sounds like we need some TV review craptaculous in here. It's just what I'm going to observe. Okay. I'm not saying oh, we should. Just nice. me. Interesting. Oh, nice. Just Introducing. Me. Oh, you know, you know what we could do? Yeah. We, could, we could pick a series that's all out on Netflix, like all 12 episodes. And what we have to do, we have to watch all the episodes back to back to back and then immediately review. You, the, the whole <laughs> I'll thing. do it as long as I can do it oh, drunk. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I can do it yeah. drunk. Yeah. I'm in. I'll do it with maybe <laughs> half hour shows. Yeah, be great. yeah can they be half hour and shows? We should start yeah. at like midnight. So we're actually debating at like five or six in the morning after staying up way too late. Marvelous and Maze of season four. Huh? I think what you do is I... like if there's three of you, like uh, two of you, 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 you tell the one person to watch a completely different show. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you say like, "What you? What did you watch? Oh no, no, that's not what we agreed on." And you just wasted. we didn't say House of Cards. No. <laughs> oh, oh, I have oh, to oh. say, John brought up Stranger Things, and there's a show. There's no show I'm more least interested in <gasps> than season three or four of Stranger. Whatever the upcoming season four, is, four, four. four. Oh, yeah. oh my Dang. god, I You're could wrong. not You're care. Right. I can't wait either. Oh, that wow. sounds like a good debate. Also, like how like Dave is just debate. wrong. That just sounds like a good yeah. debate. Well, which is why no, did, did, did you like wrong? Did, did what, you like? Do we have to see these twenty fucking year olds? <laughs> I liked season one and then enjoyed season two and then season three. I was like, what the crap is this? It did go off the rails a little. Was bit. It the, was three, it because of the Russian commandos? It was the Russian yeah, commandos. I, I, it was a secret here, base. Here's the thing: Stranger Things season three came out in 2011 or something. It's been 40 years <laughs> since season three. <laughs> Why do you need season four? Right? I mean, how dare you? Every I, I every time I go to Facebook, I'm scrolling through and I see Stranger Things uh, ex experience down in LA, yeah. and I'm like, why? Because why? they made a lot of money on it, Dave. Because you're yeah. wrong. <laughs> People oh, love that's it. A good point. Yeah. People <laughs> love it. Actually, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Yeah, there it is. Okay. You well, thank you. Be. I guess I can go now. Appreciate it. I won. I won. It sounds well, like I mean, Tara won this debate. That's Dave, good. I think you bring up a good point. They are getting a little long in tooth, and uh, and I mean, literally, yeah. Stockard Channing is playing uh, eleven now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I mean, it's just like, yeah, I think what they should have done is they should have targeted pandemic aside when they were probably going to be shooting and then figure out what the ages of the kids are. And then now all of a sudden it's, you know, 1989 or 1992. Well, you know what I, I mean? Because then I don't, know you, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm really excited to see Dame Judi Dench play a high school love interest. I think that's really engaging. <laughs> She's like, I've got to make the cheerleading squad. I mean, that's just good television. <laughs> well, that is it's good disconcerting television. because they're all starting to play like mature roles outside the show. So when they yeah. go, I'm sure it's like, and you know, when they go back into the show, they have to kind of play kids again. But I'm like, no, I think that kid was a 21 well, year like old. Like season it. three, I forget the the kid from uh, Ghostbusters. Uh, no, is is it Noah? Oh, the one who got really weird looking. Wolfhard. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and he Wolfhard. got to be like seven feet tall, and they tried to hide hide it in season three it, i mean he's not really seven feet tall but he's like a grown man yeah it was a dwarf set and he had like shoes on his knees yeah you know? I, I think it works the whole show is about nostalgia and so it harkens back to the shows of the 70s and the 80s where all the teenagers were played by 30 year olds so yeah. it, fits. Wow. it works it all that makes hasn't sense changed. i mean you look at cw none of those people are anywhere near 16 years old <laughs> no, no, and, and and I think they were a victim of their own success because really it was supposed to be a one-off show, and like each season would be a completely new that would have been great uh, story, like anthology kind of setup. Yeah, an anthology Halloween like American be, Horror yeah. Story, and they were like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Halloween was supposed to be. Instead, we have twenty movies that are all about Michael Myers trying to get to the window of his house, and they're all reboots. <laughs> exactly. Look at that reflection. <laughs> they're all origin stories. Dave, right after we our show went up for Halloween kills not too long after i listened to anthony michael hall being interviewed on michael rosenbaum's podcast inside of you it's a good show and it's just so funny to hear him talk about like man this this movie's awesome it's the best movie and <laughs> yes. michael rosenbaum it's so good there's action <gasps> halloween fans are gonna love it and wow. i literally thinking like if, if they could have just heard our show <laughs> Yeah. We were not kind. Well, well, I think I think maybe we should have a new show talking about new shows called um, "Fuck Your Press," and <laughs> in it we oh, we take we, we we take the lead up press interviews of the stars. Uh oh, someone's is. calling. Uh oh. Um, we take the lead up interviews of the stars and we play them and then we watch the movie and then we compare what they said the movie was going to be <laughs> to what the movie actually was. Where the, oh, this is like Empire Strikes Back and that it's the a pivot and a turn in the, in the trilogy. And you're like, no, no, your movie sucks. We literally and take it, their arguments line by line and just tear yeah, them straight them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like... And hey then, guys. And of course, yes. When the phone just rang, sorry, I had to answer that call. It was uh, Anthony Michael Hall's agent. He wasn't happy. <laughs> oh, damn it. Um, oh, uh, no. Shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> shut, shut it down. down. That's it. Shut it down. down. I thought it, I, I thought it, he was going to say he was announcing a, a reunion show, like a, a legacy show uh, of Weird Science, and they were going to mash it up. They were going to mash it up with another, you know, movie from that era, like Real Genius. Give me the keys, Lisa Adras. <laughs> or, or, or he was going to. Uh, oh no, he wasn't in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. He was in Vacation. Never no, mind. they never have yeah. the same Rusty and the same uh, whatever. Her, the what's the Audrey? Audrey, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's interesting is. Um, um, the only thing that's been Halloween Kills has been or Halloween has been rebooted so much, and the only thing that has been rebooted more is Batman. I was gonna say more. Jane would Ron. you like to tell us more <laughs> about that? Or Mario? Mario, tell us more about the Batman reboots. No, I wouldn't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, hey. I mentioned I do not like Batman. <laughs> hey guys, it's it's the holidays, and uh, it's the holidays. Um, it's it's, it's a holidays. Like, God forbid I say it's Christmas time. You're about and, to sing? And, it sounds like you're about to sing. Feels like we're about to bust into a musical number. You really you're about like to sing? Right. That's great. I was gonna say for a I think we should just make this show nothing about suggesting debates for real debates. And I, I really think that you guys should should be debating Rankin Bass. Rankin Bass well, is oh, that Rankin Bass. Like debate, pit, yeah. pit uh, you know, uh heat miser and cold miser versus mm -hmm. uh Rudolph. You know, mm -hmm. well, I mean, Rudolph would lose every time. Heat Miser and Cold Miser are like the thing that makes Rake and Bass Rake and Bass. If it weren't for them, no one would care. Wow, <laughs> bold statement, wow. Dave. There we go. Bold. Which, which there we is go. the wow. 
which is the holiday animated special? Rankin Bass, Charlie Brown, Grinchy Stole Christmas. Ooh. Oh, God. That's JDH, a tough one. JDH, JDH, take the wheel there on that it is. One. The gloves are off. Let's debate it. You guys are forgetting the California Raisins Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Adam wins. Adam wins. Adam wins. <laughs> Adam, you finally I, won! I, I got it! I did it! <laughs> Merry I'm Christmas. a man now! It's a Christmas miracle. Adam won. <laughs> well, on that note, should we just rate the year? I mean, we, we rate yeah. the movies. Why not rate the year? Sure. You know, we have a three-tiered rating system here at Cinema Craptaculous. The top tier being Cinema Craptaculous. This is an awesome... Well, usually it's an awesome movie, but in this case, it's an awesome year. <laughs> Uh, and then in the mid tier, Craptaculous. Eh, it's an okay year to have on a Sunday if you're hungover and you just want to watch something. And then utter crap. This is 2020, the sequel. It's not The Empire Strikes Back, but it's a uh, it's a pile of shit. So let's <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> let's. Uh, uh, who wants to go first? Well, I have a question, a clarification question. Are we rating yes. the cinema craptaculous like our year as like a as a group of podcasters in our mm. shows? Or are we rating the actual year 2021? Good distinction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good distinction. I let's let's ju- let's go with the podcast because I think if we rated 2021, it it, it would just be it would be a sad ending. <laughs> it would be it, it would be the sad end. it would be the it would be the very cheap sequel, the one that they shouldn't have made. We yes. should not have made a sequel yes. to 2020, and we did. So that's my opinion. Yeah, and, on 2021. and you know, 20, 2021 was just 2020, just amped up a little bit more and without the same star. Right. <laughs> bigger know. budget, but less content. Yeah. 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 Well, I- I'll go first like, because I'm Oh, they like in, COVID. Let's give them lady. Five variations. I am a lady. I will go first. And Are I you? am a lady. I am a lady. Allegedly. According to science. Or a broomstick. How oh, dare you! How dare you! Whoa! Uh, Whoa! Okay. Up and up until that comment, I was gonna say this is this year was cinema craptaculous. We were we were top of the top guys. We made it through. We had fun episodes. We didn't let the crap of a year that 2021 was get us down. And I I pat on the back to all of you. I wish I could give you some more eggnog, but Adam drank it all. Otherwise, I would totally <laughs> cheers you all. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Nice. That's, a, that's sweet. That's nice. I like that. All right. I'll, you know what? I'll go. Yay. I would say that this year for Cinema Cracktaculous was two thumbs up, three snaps, and Z formation. Yes. We had, <laughs> we had chills. We had debates. We had masturbates. We had everything. And we had fantastic. all the baiting. We had all the baiting. So, yes. Yeah. It was fantastic. I also will give this year for the Cinema Craptaculous family a Cinema Craptaculous rating. I mean, ordinarily, when I lock myself in a closet for an extended (laughs) period of time, it's not a joyful occurrence. However, working with y'all has made made my sad little uh, corner of my house into one of the most joyful corners of the house. So thank you all for bringing laughter and joy into my physical manifestation of my depression. So thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to say for uh, Expanded Universe, I had a great time with the gang. I think it was uh, one of our best years yet. Uh, we had a lot of fun coming up with topics, uh, goofing around. We laughed, we cried, and I'm really looking forward to some of the topics that we've been discussing for the coming year. So, uh, Cinema Crap Talk awesome. rating. You guys want to check in on Stephanie real quick and see what she thought about the year? Yeah. I think we should check in on yeah, Stephanie. Let's, let's, yeah. Steph, what did you, how do you rate this year, Steph? I don't know how I would rate this year in Cinema Crap frankly. But I do know how I would rate this betrayal. I thought we were a family, delighting in the chance to celebrate the good and the bad in cinema. But instead, it is a group of strangers who callously shut out one of their founders. But that's okay. That's all right. You know why? Because I'm turning over the page into 2022, leaving all of my regrets and grudges behind me, including the biggest grudge I now possess against you, Dave. Against you. Happy holidays and peace out. 
Stephanie, how you recorded that from being on the ledge of your hotel room, ready to jump because you had to deal with us for the last hour. I'm impressed. I would have jumped. <laughs> well, well, she was shouting down to the people below what she thought her rating was. Yeah. <laughs> I would give uh, this Cinema Craptaculous year a Cinema Craptaculous. I just think, you know, um, I feel like we're finding our stride. We're really, uh, we've got, we got some strong shows. I look back and it's always, I'm just kind of impressed with everyone's work and how funny everyone is. And I always feel a little like, what are you doing with these people? Because they're so much more talented than you. Why are you like, <laughs> how, how do they stand you? You know? That's, the, I hadn't thought of it that way. I hadn't either. <laughs> I hadn't either. <laughs> huh. I, I just, I really, I'm very proud of this show. And as someone who's not proud of very many things, I, it, it's, I think it says a lot. Um, and I'm so, it, this show always, just recording it makes me laugh. It, it makes me smile. And then I, when I listen it back to it, uh, besides listening to myself, you guys are hysterical. Um, and I think that's great. Uh, Dave, so I give it glue. Some, Dave, you're the glue that holds all this together. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm the ottoman that you put your feet on. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you're, Dave, you're the wind beneath my wings. Aww. Never forget that. Oh, thank you. Thank JDH, you. you were brought in as a guest, I remember. Did you ever think that you'd get sucked into this lunacy? <laughs> I, 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 really, I, I happily joined a uh, podcast. I'm trying to remember the first film we even talked about, and I can't even remember. It's been so long. But uh, Was it no, Waterworld? I, no. Did not expect it. It was. Do you we, remember? We did. We did that uh, cat movie, um, Pet Cemetery. The, the oh, first that's Cemetery right. Tunnel. That might have been the, the remake of uh, yeah. of Pet Cemetery. That's right. Yeah, that's right. No, and I never and expected was, it. it. No, but JDH, you you. There was another one. Was it the uh, Real yes. Missy with David Spade? Uh, yes. Now we're gonna have. Oh to my look god! It. <laughs> it's like hurting my brain to think of that movie again. <laughs> Yes, it was the yeah. wrong miss. The wrong miss. Oh my god! The wrong, uh, the wrong miss. Oh, it was I had the deleted wrong that miss. from my brain. Why would you bring that back? I just <laughs> want to say that I don't know if the listeners truly appreciate like the value. And I and and really, like you go to podcasts and yeah, you know, wow, they've got Tom Hanks and George Clooney's being interviewed, and and you know that's that's exciting. <laughs> they have Ryan Reynolds and, and Will Ferrell and real <laughs> right. stars. Yeah, yeah, you know, like David Axelrod gets you know like uh, you know like uh, Mike Pompeo to you know, but. No, literally, like we have a new show every week. It's completely different, you know. So, like, yeah. there's, there's, uh, like, we have five shows, guys. Five. We're the C- CSI of podcast. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we're, we're the Dick Wolf of podcasting. Yeah. Wait, 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 well, wait. it sounds like we're about to have six too if we go into TV. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Wait, what city are we? Are Los Angeles, New Orleans? Which one? Uh, I would say Reno. How dare you? <laughs> Reno. Don't worry, Mario. Don't worry. You're still David Caruso. Reno. You're still David Caruso, buddy. You're still David Caruso. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, well, let me take off my glasses. I know. <laughs> There it is. There it is. Dave left to go be a movie star and showed his weenie, but then came back to TV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He has, a, he has a weenie for podcasting. <laughs> well, on that note, we we checked in with yeah, we checked in with Steph. She was on the ledge, um, <laughs> like the audience. <laughs> Hopefully, she didn't yeah, jump. Exactly. <laughs> um, I'm not editing a damn word out of this. This is just wow. Let it roll. Let it roll. Let it ride. But you know, I just want to say happy holidays to everyone listening. Uh, Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us on this Cinema Craptaculous journey. This is Dave, and ever present with me are my co-hosts. John. Adam. Tara. S'more. This is Doc. JDA. And Stephanie. Uh, And remember, a bad movie is just as hard to make as a good one. It's just a lot easier to make fun of. And that's our show. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. Hey, Craptaculars, the holidays are here. And what better gift for your friends and loved ones than giving them the gift of Cinema Craptaculous? Hey, it's free, and all you have to do is tell them to go to their favorite podcast platform and subscribe to Cinema Craptaculous. It's the gift that keeps on giving. With one subscription, Cinema Craptaculous provides you with a brand new show each week. There's the B-sides, the real debates, Terror Tunnel, the expanded universe, and of course, Cinema Craptaculous. And follow at Craptaculous on all the socials. 
We couldn't do these shows without you, our loyal listeners. So thank you for helping us grow Cinema Craptaculous into this amazing family of shows. And speaking of family, you'd better chop chop on that gift shopping.